This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Obertile. But before that, this video is brought to you by Simper Buffo and David. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Obertile map can be found at the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for PC only. Now this is a 4X map. In addition, this map is loaded with custom scripts and it does have a required mod that itself is also loaded with custom scripts. I do not see in any way this map ever making its way to console as a result of those custom scripts for sure and the map being 4X. Let's go ahead and read a little bit of the description. Welcome to Oberthal. The train was freely invented and it is not based on any real existing landscape in Germany. It is partially flat, partially very mountainous and demands a lot of technique and driving skill. This is a 4X map. There are altogether 48 fields with sizes from 1.7 hectares to approximately 51. For multiplayer, there are four prepared farms only in far major level in multiplayer. And for single player, there is one prepared farm, but only in new farmer mode. There are 52 pre-built productions. All productions with a few exceptions require electrical energy to operate. And for this purpose, Numerous energy suppliers are available. All productions are completely adapted to the production revamp script. This mod is mandatory. This map also includes additional crop types in rye, spelt, white cabbage, red cabbage, onions, carrots, and poppy seed. All existing fruits can be processed further. New additional animals include goats, calves, lambs, piglets, chicks, ducks, and ducklings. 29 points of sale. 82 areas available for purchase. One forest area is located at the sawmill. Other forest areas are distributed around the map. All standard products as well as the products of the map can be sold. Large stables with extended capacities for the animals. The water withdrawal point is located on the main farm at the pod near the hardware store. Free withdrawal only here and at the greenhouses. This map includes a adjusted growing season. The Oberthrall's growing schedule is not tied to any region, but has been individually adapted to this map. Own custom trailers and harvest vehicles in the store in its own category. Three train routes to drive yourself. All train routes are completely drivable. Three open spaces for your own cultivation in single player. There's also a total of six open spaces to build in. There are no collectibles on this map. And there is a general note. Now, I don't really understand the general note, but maybe, maybe we'll figure it out during the drive around. The signals of train line one and the collector should be taken seriously. Hmm, let's hope we don't run into a train. And the map author puts special thanks to modders whose objects I was allowed to use. Let's go ahead and load on in. We are going to use the mods we typically use to take a look at maps. That is additional field info, additional game settings, Field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. And then in addition, as I mentioned, this map is going to require the production revamp mod. Now, I do know when production revamp originally came out, there was a fair bit of conflicts that were happening between it and other production mods. Those conflicts may have been worked out, but just do note, I would highly suggest if you are going to be playing this map, start out with a very, very limited mod folder and work your way up by adding mods slowly just to make sure you don't run into a mod conflict. In addition, if this is going to be your first time you have ever used production revamp, I would suggest checking the link down in the description below. I did do a new and noteworthy video on production revamp itself. It's very important that you fully understand what production revamp does because as the name is, it totally revamps the production in farm sim. And if you're not prepared, I think you're going to get a little bit confused into how it all works. Now, we'll tell you, if you load this map up in a farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that the main farm, as well as all the other farms, are completely empty. They are just blank slates ready for you to put things down. 
in new farm mode, you start out with the main farm and then all of the other areas are also completely blank slates, just as the description said. We will be doing a segment during the video later where we will jump into a multiplayer session and check out farms two, three, and four in their specific details. But for now, we're gonna focus in single player. This map does take quite a while to load up both in single player and multiplayer as you're seeing here, because well, there is so, so much going on. And I thought it was appropriate, given the complexity of this map, well, that I put on the horse power suit because we're gonna have to power through this video. Sit down, you're gonna be here for a while. Now, when we load in for the very first time, we do load in kind of at town and we have a nice PDA referencing where all of the various things are located. So we have the four various farms right over here and then they are all located here on the map. The starting farm is gonna be right there in the orange dot. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA itself. Remember, this is a 4X map, so all of these fields are much, much larger than they would initially appear. We do have all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22 on this map, including spelt, onion, carrot, white cabbage, red cabbage, rye, and poppy. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. No, sorry. Go ahead and take a look at our farmland screen. You're going to see we start up by owning farmland ID 49. That is the main starting farm. We can buy that for $197,204 in any alternate play mode. We also start out with farmland ID 23, 24, 32, and 33. Those are all fields. Now, as far as the other items on the map, we have buildable plots in single player located at farmland ID 52. That is $172,715 to buy. Farmland ID 51 for $165,414 to buy. Farmland ID 50 for $131,388 to buy and Farmland ID 65 right over here. Nice little plot for $18,855. As we will see soon in multiplayer mode, 52, 51, and 50 are also pre-built farms in multiplayer. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. The farmland lease screen is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included, and then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? I do like to see when our farmlands and our fields match up one for one. That makes numbering our fields and farmlands pretty easy, as well as identifying those when we take a look and try to figure out how much these fields are going to cost us. Then as far as farmland 50 and below, we are just talking about land itself, no particular fields. Let's go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. As far as our starting fields, we have field 23, which is 12 hectares, field 24, which is 19, field 32, which is 15.86, and field 33, which is 17.69. Go ahead and take a look down through the rest of these fields. Clearly, this is going to be a map where you're going to be wanting to play with some fairly large machinery because we do have some pretty decent sized fields. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how the soil map is being applied to these fields. As you can see, this map is making use of the generic soil map and our starting fields are mostly sandy loam and loam with a bit of silty clay as well down here in 32 and 33. Now, while the description said that there was a custom crop counter, there's not a whole lot of differences here, if any, with respect to the base game crops. But we do, of course, have custom growth schedules for our additional crops in spelt, onion, carrot, white cabbage, red cabbage, rye, and poppy. Taking a look down through our pricing screen, you will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us in Farm Sim 22, often at multiple lots of different sell points. We also have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, hay, straw, and grass. In addition, we also do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game productions as well. Once again, that are available in Farm Sim 22. We also have several custom productions, which we will be getting to here in a little bit. We do have the ability to buy and sell lime, 
as well as stones. As far as our platinum expansion, we once again also do indeed have the ability to sell all of the platinum expansion items as well. They are all available for sale at the various all sell locations scattered around the map. If you do happen to be playing with pumps and hoses, you also do have the ability to sell your separated manure. And now we're going to start taking a look at the custom productions. We have the ability to sell our crops in poppy, rye, spelt, carrot, onion, red cabbage, and white cabbage once again. And then as far as our production go, we have empty pallets, compost, baked poppy, tomato juice, strawberry juice, carrot juice, onion juice, buns, poppy seed buns, popcorn, oatmeal. We have potato pancakes. We have salt, cream, strawberry ice cream, chocolate ice cream, French fries, mashed potatoes, potato chips, palm ants, vinegar, tomato salad. We also have green salad, potato salad, strawberry cream cake, pralines, soy drink, oat drink, wheat simolia. We have pasta, spaghetti, cardboard, vitamins, sodium chloride, then we have fish in carp, pike, and salmon. We also have the ability to make fish food, fish flour, soy flour, pizza, carrot salad, coleslaw, chicken feed, goat milk, and goat cheese. Now we will be having a dedicated segment on the productions here in a little bit. With respect to our starting fleet, our starting vehicles are the same across all of the farms. So in single player, as well as the four various multiplayer farms, we do start out with all of our vehicles owned. None of it is leased and is all well maintained. We do start out at the main starting farm with a sheep barn, chicken coop, goat barn, cow barn, and a pigsty. And in fact, across all four farms in multiplayer as well, we have the same animal loadout. We do have contracts available on this map. We do start out in new farm mode, owning the energy storage, as well as a fermenter and a grass dryer. And once again, in fact, all of the multiplayer farms as well contain the same three productions once you buy the land. This map does not have any collectibles either. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. And once again, our starting fleet is the same across all of the farms the single player farm, as well as the four multiplayer farms. We start out with three specific trailer mods that are part of the map itself. We have the MKS-35, we have the Profiliner and the MKS-8, and they have all been set up to accept the custom products that are available on the map. And our small tractors, we have the Lintrack 130, as well as the Rigidtrack SKE-50 electric tractor. We have the Dutzfar 8280 TTV medium tractor, as well as the MAN TGS 18500 4x4 semi. Then that is going to be also then used with our Profiliner trailer. We have our Fent Ideal 7T harvester, and we're going to be using that to harvest some of our new crops. And then for our harvester, we have the Dynaflex 40 foot header. Again, it is configured for some of those new grain crops. We have a Crone Big M450 self-propelled mower. We have our 2017 pickup. We have the Welger DK115 trailer. We have the Ecomat plow as well as the F240 front mower. We have the Alpine Hit 4.4H tether as well as the top 432 windrower. I think it's kind of funny. We have this large self-propelled mower, but then we have these little tethers and windrowers. We've got the small Boss Alpine 251 forage wagon. We have the Impress 125 F Pro baler. We have the three-point hitch bale transport thing for round bales. We have our front loader arms and a Quickie Q3M. For the front loader, we have the Universal Bucket and Bale Spike. We have our Nardi N7040 header trailer for our Dynaflex 4040. 40 foot grain header. Then we round it all out with a 750 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, this map des definitely has some custom vehicles and implements that are part of the map. We have the MKS-8 and the MKS-35 that we've already seen as owned equipment. We also have the Profi Liner that again is set up for all of the new fill types. We have the Silver Star that is set up for the new animals, as well as the NOAA TTW140 animal trailers. We have the Ropa Panther 2 that is going to be working not only with sugar beets, but it's also going to be set up for potatoes, red cabbage, white cabbage, 
carrots and onions. Then we have the corresponding headers for the Ropa Panther 2 and Tiger 6S, which again are set up for all of the root crops and vegetables that have been added to the map. We have the Keeler 2, once again, set up for all the vegetables and root crops. Then we have the Remy Ventor 4150 self-propelled potato harvester that has also been set up for sugar beets, our cabbages, as well as our carrots and onions, as well as the trailed Evo 290 potato harvester. And then we have the topper that are also available that are going to be working for those other crops. And then we have the Rec Store 6900 Platinum, again, set up for all the root crops and vegetables. The Rooster 604, again, for all the root crops and vegetables. Then we have the Pace Setter, which is a semi trailer that, again, has been set up to accept various bulk fill types that are available on the map. Now, let's go ahead and do a rundown of all the productions that are available here on Oberthal. So once again, this map uses production revamp. Your productions are going to look a lot different than they are used to if you are not using production revamp. If you're not familiar with that mod, please go take a look at my new and noteworthy video, which is linked down in the description below. I'm also going to put a little tick up there in the upper right corner so you can go ahead and jump to that. I'm also going to link to the production revamp download over at the Mod Hub, so you can go ahead and click on that. There is a very large description on the Mod Hub listing and a link to the documentation. Highly recommend, unless you are heavily playing with production revamp, to go check that out. Read through the documentation so you can thoroughly understand what I'm talking about here when I run through all of these production options. So for our bakery. You're going to see we have two lines here. That means that the bakery is going to run in parallel, which means that you can activate any of these four productions and you are not going to have a reduced output as a result. Anywhere you see a Y, that means that it's going to basically use distributed production or what I call serial production and that it's only going to be able to produce one thing, one product line at a time. So you're going to basically be splitting your time over the given month for your production, if you're running more than a single item in a Y production, you're gonna have lower output combined than if you only produced one particular thing for that given month. So our bakery, we're gonna be able to produce bread, buns, poppy seed buns, and cakes. And for our bread, we're gonna need two units of electricity and 40 units of flour. And we're gonna to need to use three units of salt or one unit of empty pallets and we're gonna get 27 units of bread. For our buns, two units of energy and 26 units of flour, and three units of salt, or one unit of empty pallet for 20 units of buns, poppy seed buns, two units of energy, 26 units of flour, five units of baked poppy, five units of salt, or one pallet, and then that's gonna make 23 units of poppy seed. Cakes, all right, here we go. We have five units of energy, 10 units of flour, 10 units of milk, 10 units of eggs, 10 units of butter, and 10 units of strawberries, and either five units of sugar or two units of honey, and 1.3 units of salt or three units of pallets to make 30 cakes. Now you can see that we do have priority listings over here also. Again, go and check my mod review with respect to the production revamp to fully understand what is going on with all of those options. Our BGA, we can do produce energy from silage as well as methane and digestate. We're going to need 45 units of silage and either five units of digestate or sorry, slurry, five units of manure or three units of cut sugar beet. And they are going to then produce 41 units of energy, five units of methane and 18 units of digestate. For our carpentry shop, we're going to need two units of electricity and either 40 units of wood or 28 units of planks and either two units of pallets or two units of cardboard to produce 32 units of furniture and 1.4 units of wood chips. For our cereal factory, we're going to need five units of power plus five units of honey plus five units of raisins and 23 units of corn. Then we're going to need to either have either 18 units of oatmeal or 70 units of oats and five pallets or 
five units of cardboard. That's going to make 55 units of cereal. Our cheese factory is going to use two units of electricity, 24 units of or milk, and either one unit of empty pallet or three units of salt to make 21 units of butter. Cheese, we're going to need two units of energy, 21 units of milk, and either one unit of pallets or three units of salt to make 18 units of cheese. For our goat cheese, we're going to need two units of energy, 21 units of goat milk, and either one unit of pallets or two units of salt to make 16 units of goat cheese. For our clothing factory, we have two units of energy and 60 units of fabric. Then we're going to need to combine that with either 10 units of pallets or 10 units of cardboard to make 45 units of clothing. Our compost factory is going to require two units of electricity and any of the following inputs. 60 units of wheat, barley, oat, canola, sorghum, grapes, olives, sunflowers, soybeans, corn, potatoes, sugar beet, sugar beet cut, sugar cane, chaff, silage, grass, hay, straw, raisins, lettuce, tomatoes, strawberries, rye, white cabbage, spelt, pomenance, carrot, red cabbage, poppy, or onions. And we're going to then get 100 units of compost as a result. Our confectionery. We're going to take five units of energy, 10 units of flour, 10 units of milk, 10 units of eggs, 10 units of butter, and 10 units of strawberries. Sounds very similar to our bakery, does it not? And then we're going to combine that with five units of sugar or two units of honey and 1.3 units of salt, three units or three units of empty pallets or three units of cardboard to get 30 cakes. We're going to be able to make strawberry cream cakes with five units of energy, 28 units of strawberries. 10 units of flour, 5 units of cream, 5 units of butter, 5 units of chocolate, and either 5 units of sugar or 2 units of honey, and 4 units of empty pallets to get 20 strawberry cream cakes. For our pralines, we need 5 units of energy, 15 units of chocolate, 3 units of cream, 3 units of sugar, and either 2 units of pallets or 3 units of cardboard to get 17 pralines. Our dairy is going to take five units of energy and 30 units of butter. And then we're going to combine that with either one unit of empty pallets, one unit of cardboard, or three units of salt in order to get 26 units of butter. Cream is going to be two units of energy, 30 units of milk. And then we're going to combine that with two units of empty pallets to get 26 units of cream. Our soy drink is going to two units of energy, 30 units of soybeans. And then we're going to combine that with either six units of sugar or two empty pallets or two units of cardboard to get 20 soy drink units. Our oat drink is going to be 20, two units of energy, 30 units of oats. And then we're going to combine that with either six units of salt, two units of pallets, or two units of cardboard to get 26 units of oat drink. Our deli salad is going to be tomato salad for five units of energy, 25 units of tomatoes, five units of onions. And then we're going to combine that with either three units of salt, one unit of sunflower oil, one unit of empty pallets, or one unit of cardboard to get 13 units of our tomato salad and one unit of compost. Now, with respect to our green salad, we're going to need five units of energy. 24 units of white cabbage. Then we're going to combine that with either three units of vinegar, three units of sugar, or one unit of pallets, or one unit of cardboard. And we're going to get 11 units of green salad. Potato salad is going to be five units of energy, 50 units of potatoes, and five units of onions. Then we're going to combine those with either two units of Salt, one unit of vinegar, one unit of empty pallets, or one unit of cardboard. And we're going to get 10 units of potato salad and one unit of compost. As far as our coleslaw goes, we're going to have five units of energy, 100 units of white cabbage, 100 units of red cabbage. And we're going to combine all of those with, again, 10 units of salt, five units of vinegar, four units of pallets, eight units of cardboard to get 35 units of coleslaw and 10 units of compost. Our carrot salad is going to be five units of energy, 50 carrots. And we're going to combine that with either five units of sugar, five units of vinegar, two units of empty pallets, three units of cardboard for 25 units of carrot salad and one compost. Our energy storage is simply going to be storage in and storage out. Our feed production, we've got total mixed rations. It's going to be five units of energy, 170 units of straw, 
85 units of silage, and then we're going to combine that with either 150 units of hay or 170 units of grass, and we're going to get 420 units of TMR. Pig food is going to be 5 units of energy and either 5 units of potatoes, 4 units of sugar beet cut, 5 units of sugar beet, or 3 compost. We're going to combine that then with either 5 units of sorghum or 50 units of corn. We're going to combine that with either 25 units of oat, barley, or wheat. We're going to then combine that with either 20 units of canola, 20 units of soybeans, or 20 units of sunflowers to get our 100 units of pig feed. Our chicken feed is going to be 5 units of energy, 10 units of sunflowers, 18 units of hay. We're going to combine that with 25 units of sorghum or 25 units of corn. We're then going to combine that with either 12 units of oats, 12 units of wheat, and 12 units of barley to get 60 units of chicken feed. Our fermenter is going to be 5 units of energy plus either 100 units of grass, chaff, or 200 units of straw. And we're going to then combine that with one unit of silage additive to get 80 units of silage. Our fertilizer factory is going to be 5 units of energy plus 40 units of digestate or 50 units of slurry. We're going to combine that with 25 units of manure or 13 units of compost or 13 units of, oh, sorry, pomance. That is pomance, this, this darker looking one, or 13 units of compost. So I had all of these other slightly messed up here where I was saying compost. That is pomance. Sorry about that mistake there. For our seed factory, we're going to be 5 units of energy, 25 units of wheat, 25 units of barley, 25 units of oat, or 25 units of sorghum. We're going to combine one of those inputs with our energy to also have 25 units of compost or 25 units of solid fertilizer to make 50 units of seed. We're going to take for our herbicide, two units of energy, 20 units of salt, and 11 units of vinegar. We're going to combine that to get 35 units of herbicide. Our liquid fertilizer is going to be two units of energy, 25 units of slurry, 25 units of solid fertilizer, and 25 units of compost for 75 units of liquid fertilizer. For our fish farming, we're going to get two units of energy and 40 units of fish feed. We're going to combine that with either two units of fish flour or three empty pallets, and we're going to then get 16 carp, 10 pike, and 10 salmon as an output. Our fish factory food is going to be two units of energy, 30 units of corn, 20 units of soybeans. We're going to combine that with either, or sorry, we're going to combine that with 10 units of soy flour to get 40 units of our fish feed. Our fish flour is going to be two units of energy, then two carp, two pike, or two salmon to get two units then of fish flour. Frizzy Spiz Factory, our drink factory, is going to take two units of energy, 20 tomatoes. We're going to combine that with one unit of empty pallets to get 16 tomato juices, six pomenants, and six vitamins. Our strawberry juice is going to be two units of energy, 40 strawberries, plus one an empty pallet to get 16 strawberry juices, six pomenants, and six vitamins. Grape juice, two units of energy, 16 units of grapes. Combine that with either one pallet or one unit of cardboard to get 16 grape juices, three pomenants, and four vitamins. Our onion juice is going to be two units of energy, 20 units of onions, one unit of empty pallets. It's going to be 17 units of onion juice, six pomenants, and six vitamins. Our carrot juice is going to be two units of energy, 60 units of carrots, one unit of empty pallets. It's going to make 15 units of carrot juice, six pomenants, and six vitamins. Our flour grain mill is going to be five units of energy and then either 120 units of barley, 120 units of oats, 120 units of sorghum, 120 units of wheat, 120 units of spelt, or 120 units of rye. We're going to combine those with either three empty pallets or three cardboards to get 96 units of flour and 25 pomenants. Our wheat semola is going to be five energy, 80 units of wheat. We're going to combine that with two empty pallets to get 16 pomades and 150 wheat samola. Our soy flour is going to be five units of energy, six units of soybeans, plus two units of our empty pallets to get three pomades and 12 soy flour. Baked poppy is going to be five energy and 12 poppies and one empty pallet to make three pomades and 20 baked poppies. Our grass dryer is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be energy plus 150 units of grass in order to get 150 units of hay. Our greenhouses, we're going to take water, and then we're going to combine that with either one unit of solid fertilizer, one unit of compost, one unit of seed, or one unit of empty pallet in order to get eight lettuce. 
So we have four of those. Then we have four strawberry greenhouses. Well, same inputs, but we're gonna get 32 strawberries out of those. We have four of those. Our tomatoes, 13 units of water, and then one unit of liquid fertilizer or solid fertilizer, compost, seed, or empty pallets to get 16 tomatoes. We again have four of those. Our ice cream production factory is gonna be three units of chocolate, five units of energy, plus either six units of sugar or three units of honey, plus either six units of milk or one and a half units of cream, plus either one unit of empty pallet or one cardboard to get eight chocolate ice cream cones. Our strawberry ice cream is gonna be very, very similar. Five units of energy, 24 units of strawberries, and then six units of sugar or three units of honey, plus six units of milk or 1.5 units of cream or, and then an addition to, sorry, one empty pallet or one cardboard to eight strawberry ice creams. Our chocolatier is gonna make chocolate with two units of energy, 20 units of sugar, and either 20 milks or 10 creams, and either three empty pallets or three cardboards to get 40 chocolates. Our lime mine is gonna take diesel in order to produce some lime. Our Myers Manufacturer, which is gonna make popcorn, oatmeal, or potato cakes. We're gonna make for popcorn, five units of energy and 50 units of corn is going to, and we're gonna combine that with one empty pallet or three salt or three sugar or one cardboard to make 20 popcorns. Our oatmeal is gonna be five units of energy, 36 units of oats, and either one empty pallet or one cardboard to get 20 units of oatmeal. Potato cakes are gonna be five units of energy, 80 units of potatoes, eight units of flour, four units of eggs. We're gonna combine all that with either four units of salt or one unit of pallet or one unit of cardboard for 60 potato cakes. Our oil mill is gonna be two units of energy, 40 units of sunflowers. Combine that with two empty pallets or two cardboards to make 32 units of sunflower oil and eight pomenants. Our canola oil is gonna be very, very similar, except we're gonna swap out canola for our recipe. And then our olive oil is gonna be two units of energy, 20 units of olives with either two units of cardboard or two units of empty pallets to make 15 units of olive oil and two pomenants. Our pallet factory is gonna be one unit of energy and 50 planks to make 70 empty pallets. Our pasta factory is gonna take five units of energy, 75 units of wheat samola, 40 units of flour, in order, and then we're gonna combine that with either two eggs or two salt or two empty pallets or two cardboard to make 30 pastas. Spaghetti is gonna be five units of energy, 75 units of wheat samola, 40 units of flour, and we're gonna combine all that with, again, two units of eggs or five salt or two empty pallets or two cardboard for 36 spaghetti strands. Our pizza plant is gonna be two units of flour, two units of salt, two units of tomatoes, two units of cheese, and two units of canola oil. We're gonna combine that all with either two units of olives or two units of cardboard or two units of pallets to get six pizza pies. Our potato processing is gonna take five units of energy and 30 potatoes. We're gonna combine that with either 1.5 units of salt or one empty pallet or one unit of canola oil or one cardboard and we're gonna get 44 potato chips, sorry, four French fries or four and four pomenants. Man, this is a long list. We have five units of energy, 50 potatoes and five units of milk for our mashed potatoes. We're gonna combine that, all of that with either four units of salt, one empty pallet or one cardboard to get 10 units of mashed potatoes and four pomenants. Our potato chip factory is gonna be five units of energy, 35 units of potatoes. We're gonna combine that with 1.5 units of salt, one empty pallet, one sunflower oil, and one cardboard. We're gonna get 3.5 units of potato chips and three hominids. Sorry, I was cracking up a little bit. I was thinking this could be this could be one heck of a challenge to read through all of this and not screw up once. Because it's hard. Our pulp plant is gonna produce cardboard with five units of energy, 18 units of corn. We're gonna combine that with either 25 units of wood or 310 wood chips. And we're gonna get then 80 units of cardboard. Our refinery is gonna make diesel and death. For our diesel, we're gonna use five units of energy and either 24, 28 units of canola or 28 units of sunflowers. We're gonna combine that and we're gonna get 40 units of diesel 
and 10 prominent. Our depth is going to be five units of energy and either 100 units of digestate or 100 units of slurry. And we're going to get 40 units of depth. Salt is going to be five units of energy for 36 units of salt. Sodium chloride is going to be five units of energy for 25 units of sodium chloride. And road salt is going to be five units of energy for 35 units of road salt. Our sawmill is going to take five units of energy and 60 units of wood, and it's going to produce 80 planks and two units of wood chips. Our special feed and fermenting plant is going to take one unit of energy, one unit of milk. We're going to combine that with one unit of empty pallets, and we're going to make one unit of silage additive. Really? That's interesting. Our mineral feed is going to be one unit of energy, 16 units of vitamins, 12 units of sodium chloride, one unit of empty pallets, and we're going to then make 20 units of mineral feed. Our spinner is going to be two units of energy and either 40 units of wool or 30 units of cotton, plus five units of empty pallets to get 60 units of fabric. Our sugar mill is going to be five units of energy plus either 100 units of sugar cane, 80 units of sugar beet cut, or 100 units of sugar beet, and either one empty pallet or one cardboard to get 45 units of sugar and 10 pomades. Our vinegar is going to be five units of energy and 100 units of sugar beet or 70 units of sugar beet cut. And we're going to get 25 units of vinegar and 10 units of pomades out of that. And then our sugar beet cutter is going to be one unit of energy plus 80 sugar beets is going to make 100 sugar beet cut. Wow, that is the list, boys. That is quite the list to run down. Quite the sophisticated production, and I hope you understand why now I have suggested that you go take a close look at production revamp and fully understand what is going on before you really dive into production on this map. Now, the description said 52 pre-built productions, but when I did my listing of all the productions earlier from the console command, I only came up with 49. So I'm thinking maybe there's a couple productions that are not pre-placed. I'm not really sure where the differential is coming in there. But at any rate, let's go ahead and take a look around at the main farm. And then we're going to take a quick break and jump over into multiplayer. And we're going to then run down through farms 2, 3, and 4. So here we are at farmland ID 49, which is the main starting farm. We're going to find that right here on the map. And again, this is where we start in when we load up the map for the very first time. So there's farmland ID 49. We have our farmhouse located right here. That's going to include our pickup truck. Let's go ahead and hit the land that is kind of north of the farmhouse. We have stone storage located right there. And then we have our first silo to our left is going to be our grain silo. We have a nice informational board here telling us how much crop is stored in here, of which type. We have our dump point. We have our fill point. This is going to be a train transfer area. So we have our dump point. We have our fill point. And then we have our liquid fill point. And this is going to then translate to the train tracks down there. Okay, so we're going to be able to basically fill or transfer product up here to down there to the train. And we're going to find that at all the other farms as well. A large equipment shed located up here with maintenance trigger. We have herbicide and liquid fertilizer storage. This is going to be our grass dryer. And again, we own this at the start. All we have to do is own the land. We have our fermenter over here. And you see that's where our large storage shed is located. And then each farm is going to have storage for lime, seed, and solid fertilizer. Let's make our way back down here by the farmhouse. Now over here we have another silo system, but this is for our root crops. Again, we're gonna see what is displayed there. 
We have our dump and fill points. Here we have energy storage. All right, we're going to be storing up a bunch of energy from our solar panels or other ways of producing energy. We're going to need a way of storing that so we can then have our production overnight. Here we have our sheep, 650 sheep. So we have our delivery point, we have our food point, and then we have our wool spawn point. Here we have our chicken coop. For our food. And then we have 1,440 chickens. And then we, of course, have chicks, ducklings, and ducks as well. All of these extra animals are courtesy of Farmer Andy and Hoff Bergman. Then we have our egg spawn point. We also have a methane fill point as well as an energy storage or energy charging station. We can remove this fence. We have bale and pallet storage as well over here. Then this is going to be a water fill point. Let's make our way further south. Here we have a forage storage. So we have grass, hay, straw, silage, all of that fun stuff, including compost and sugar beet, chopped sugar beet, etc. We have our def tank, which is located right here. And we have our fuel diesel storage right there. We have a large storage shed another storage shed located right here we have a wash bay and then if we continue south we have our pigs so we have our slurry point we have our food point and then we're going to have our drop off point for our pigs 1,080 pigs in total. We have our cow area here, and it does use the auto robot feeder. 2,000 cows are available in this building alone. We have then our milk. Of course, if we want to feed them directly, we have our food trough or our straw trigger located right there. And then we have our feeding robot. So we have our hay, straw, and silage then our mineral feed on the side. We have our slurry point over there as well. We have a manure heap. And then we have our goats. 650 goats. We have our straw. We have our food. We have our goat milk. Outputs there as well. Let's go ahead and jump to our animals and just take a quick look here. So our sheep. They're going to be taking grass or hay, pretty normal. Ducks, chickens, and all that are going to be taking chicken feed, wheat, barley, millet, or chicken feed. Goats are going to be taking grass and hay, just like our sheep. Our cows, we've got TMR, hay, and grass. And then our pigs, pretty standard here. Nothing overly sophisticated with respect to how any of the animal feed is being done. So with that, let's go ahead and get ready for a fly around the map. And as you can see from the mini map over here in the lower left, there's a whole lot going on. You saw from the pricing screen, there's a whole lot of sell points. Farm two is over at farmland ID 52. And while the equipment is the same as single player, in fact, all of the equipment is the same in all multiplayer farms, they are gonna be laid out different. And farm two is gonna be located down here at farmland ID 52, like I said, which is down here to the south. And that can be bought for $172,715. So we have our farmhouse located here. We have a chicken coop. We've got a lot, rather large buildable area 
to the north of the farmhouse and chicken coop. We then have def storage, diesel storage. We have methane pump as well as a charging station. Over here we have herbicide and liquid fertilizer storage. Right there. Then have our root crop silo located right here. And we have a dump point from the train. We have a fill point for the train. We also have a dump point and fill point here for our trailers. Here we have a storage silo for stones. Here we have a general grain silo. Again, we have a dump point and fill point for our train. Dump point and fill point for our trailers. This is going to be a feed storage silo. So we have our dump and fill point there. And then we all have these digital boards. Again, you've seen this for all of our silos. Across the street, we have a sheep barn. And this particular sheep barn is configured to hold 650 sheep. We have our food trough. Then we have our wool spawn point there. We have a large cow barn. This is going to be with the self feeder as well as a manure heap. And this is configured for 2,000 cows. So we have our milk trigger, we have our food trigger obviously inside if we are going to be feeding manually, or of course we do have the feeding robot. Over here we have our goat barn. So we have our goat milk. We have our feed for our goats. We have our straw for our goats. And we have the delivery trigger. 650 goats in this facility. Just north of that, we have our pig area. So we're slurry point. We have our food point. And 1,080 pigs in here. Across the street from that, we have our grass dryer. Is a production point. Then here we have a fermenting silo. We do own those at the uh, by buying the land. Here we have a bale and pallet storage. Then we have several bee houses and then our honey spawn point. In the main farm area, we have several sheds. We have a shed here with solar generation. We have storage for lime. We have storage for seed. And we have storage for fertilizer. And then this is going to be an energy storage building as well. And that should be all of the items to talk about here on Farm 2. Farm 3 is going to be located to the north, and it is going to be called basically the North Farm. Once again, we have our farmhouse, and all of the equipment is, again, the same as all of the other farms. Now, this farm is rather unique in how it is laid out, and that is that the land is quite spread around. This is going to be farmland ID 50. Now, as you can see, we have an area over here to the west. We have an area over here to the east of this lake. And then we have a small plot here as well, just north of farmland ID 55, which is going to be a little bit of a forest. So at our farmland, we have then a shed that's going to have energy storage, bale and pallet storage. We have our stone heap. We have storage for fertilizer, for seed, more vehicle storage. We have our herbicide and liquid fertilizer storage tanks, as well as our energy and methane pumps. We have lime storage there. We have our def and 
diesel storage. Here we have our train transfer area, and this is going to be where we're going to be able to transfer product to and from the train. We also have a rent train trigger there as well. Now let's go over here to this little plot above the forest. That is where we have our beehives and our honey spawn point. Then on the other side of the lake, we've got the rest of the farm. So here we have our feed silo storage, our dump and fill point. We have our chicken coop. Fourteen hundred and forty-four chickens. Of course, they're also going to hold ducks and ducklings. We have our sheep. Another six hundred and fifty sheep in here. Here we have our goats. Six hundred and fifty goats. We have our regular grain silo. So we have our train dump and fill. Then we have our dump and fill for our trailers. We have our pigs. 1,080 pigs. And then we have our cow area, which is, of course, going to hold 2,000 cows. We have our associated manure heap for our cows and pigs. Got a little bit of a build zone over here as well. We have a wash bay, and then this is going to be our root crop storage. So we're dump and fill for our trailer, and our dump and fill for our train. Then the fourth and final farm that is pre built in multiplayer mode it's going to be over here to the west and it is going to be farmland id number 51 so we can see with respect to where all of these farms are laid out farmland id 1 right here farm 1 from multiplayer farmland id 40 52 sorry that's farm 2 farm 3 is the north farm at farmland id 50 and then farm 4 is here at farmland id 51 $165,414 to buy. When you join the farms, you do start out with starting money and you will need to buy the land. It's pretty easy to establish where your land is because, well, all of your machinery is already there. All you gotta do is join the farm and hit tab, and then jump over to where your farm is located. So we have our farmhouse, some large storage sheds, of course. Then we have our storage for fertilizer, seed, as well as lime. We have our chicken coop. We really don't need to buy those because we know that they're going to have the same capacity as all the other farms. We have our cow area. We have our pigs as well as our goats and our manure heap for our pigs and cows. We have our sheep area located right there. We have our beehives with honey. The wash bay, we have our def and diesel storage. We have stone storage. We have energy and methane, as well as herbicide and liquid fertilizer. We then have our general grain silo, again with train dump and fill points and trailer dump and fill points. We have a root crop silo, train dump and fill points, and root crop or trailer dump and fill points. Here we have a general transfer station to transfer products to and from the train. They are not in the silo. We have bale and pallet storage. Here we have our feed silo for storage. 
We have our fermenter. I guess I should change that. This is going to be our our grass dryer. Yeah. Do we have our fermenter? A large storage shed there. Our feed silo is located right here. And then our energy storage building is located right there as well. Get a little altitude, and this is clearly a massive, massive farm. Right? We can see that located right here. And there's still more over there. We've got our solar panels here on this shed. In fact, before we go and mess with the fly around, let's go and dive through the build mode because there is a whole lot going on. As far as the sheds go, we do have a couple custom sheds that are a part of this map. Not a whole lot, but we do have a couple custom ones. And they, for the most part, are going to include solar panels. They'll have here kind of the solar, the sun input, and then power as output if they do have solar panels on those. We have silos. We do have some custom silos that are also part of this map. Of course, we have our main grain silo, 144 million liters worth of product we have 40 million liters for our earth crop solar or silo our feed storage is 65 million liters we have our stone heap we have earth fruit storage that was not pre-placed on the map then we have our manure heap silo extensions of course have our manure heap extension containers we have our def tank we have a mineral feed buying station we have our water point then we have a fertilizer storage seed and lime storage our herbicide and liquid fertilizer tank, as well as our fuel tank. Tools, fairly standard tools. And then we do have fairly standard farmhouses as well, because again, we are using this as our farmhouse. Under production. Well, yes, indeed. We do have a heap ton of custom production going on here. We've got some different BGAs because again, they are going to be working with production revamp. We've got our bakery. That's going to work with our custom productions, our spinnery, a tailor shop. We have a great processing. We have another bakery, carpentry, dairy. We have a spinnery, pallet factory. We have a grass dryer, a fermenter, another dairy. We have a sugar mill, carpentry, cereal factory, oil mill, ice cream production, grain mill. We have a sugar beet cutter. We have a biomass power plant. We have a pasta factory, a special feed and fermenting factory. We have fish feed and we have pizza processing. We have then an all sale location as well as a restaurant also part of the map. We do have custom greenhouses in our large tomato, lettuce and strawberry as well as a medium strawberry greenhouse. Standard orchards and then we have plenty of extra generators here as well. So we have different power plants to produce solar power. We can get some wind power production going on here with our wind turbines. And then we have our energy storage building. For our animals, we do have some custom animals, pens included on the map. We do have then a custom pallet location for our honeybee hives because they're gonna spawn more than one pallet at a time. And then we do have a special category for goats. Fairly standard deco, but we do have a couple custom gates also included here on the map. And then some signs for our silos if we want to put those down. And then as far as ground textures, maybe a little disappointing with the types of ground textures that we've got here. Fairly fairly standard setting of ground textures. We have our animal mud, we have our asphalt, we have our cobblestone, we have our concrete, we have dirt, we have another flavor of dirt. We're going to then have our forest ground. We have grass. We have dry grass. We have gravel. We have our rock. And then we have our granite. And then plants. Fairly standard plants. And fairly standard tree assortment as well. So as far as that goes, let's just kind of attempt to go counterclockwise.
So we have the BGA, which is just south of 15. And we cannot sell the biogas plant. I tried to sell the biogas plant earlier. It does give you some money, but the BGA does still remain. We have an all sell point there as well. Then we have three three-sided silage bunkers. None of the BGA items can be sold. We have a restaurant sell point below. We have a little bit of a build area here. That is going to be farmland ID 65. Here we have a sell point as well as a lime or sugar beet cutter, sorry, and then our stone sell point. We have a sell point here as well at this hotel. Here we have one of our production areas. We'll go through a lot closer detail when we get to the drive around portion. We have a cell point here at the Grand Hotel. And then this is going to be our... I think this is our salt extraction. Let's make way across the river. Now we're coming up to a large area that is currently blank. That is, as you already know, one of the multiplayer farms. We have our spinnery below. We have the large multiplayer farm that is now just a vacant building lot. We have another all cell cell building. We have a fuel point. We have our chocolatier production. Another all cell building below. We have our farmer's market. There we have another fuel point and a stall point. Another cell point at this overlook hotel. And then here we have a general transfer area to transfer products on to one of the three train lines. This is going to be our lime mine. Another cell point there. I believe this is our fish factory. Again, we'll get much closer detail when we get to our fly around. Here we have our drink factory. Some more production. We'll call this production row. Here we have the train cell point for our transferring to the various lines. is where we load it in. We load it in for the very first time. We have some cell points here as well. We have our vehicle dealer. We do have custom trains. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Custom train cars, including some liquid cars. Over here we have another transfer area to transfer a product to and from the train line. Another all-cell cell building. Our greenhouses are all located over here. As well as more production. Another cell point below there. And then here we have another large area. This is where another multiplayer farm is located. We have our refinery. 
some more production. Five points located down there. We have fuel. We have various other cell points kind of up here in this town. There we have the BGA that we already talked about. More production going on. We have our cheese factory as well as our dairy. And ice cream factory. Another one of the universal all cell cell points. We have another farmer's market here to the north. Then coming around, we have another of the four multiplayer areas. This one is covering a large section of the center of the north part of the map. We have fuel. We have our sawmill, our carpentry, as well as then our pallet factory. This is more of that northern multiplayer farm that we've already seen in the video. Here we have areas to transfer product to and from the various train lines. And here we have flower production. And again, we're going to be able to transfer products to and from the train into our plant and then out of our plant into the train, should we so wish. And with that, let's make our way back down here to the vehicle shop, jump in our Mahindra, and start our marathon of a drive around. So down here at our vehicle shop, we of course have our maintenance trigger located right here and it is indeed a dealer trigger so we will be able to customize sell repair repaint our vehicles then we have our dealer trigger itself let's go ahead and pick up that mahindra see where our vehicles spawn in at they have a massive area here for our vehicles to spawn Okay, so this whole lighter area of concrete is where our vehicle is going to be spawning in at because, well, we have quite a lot of large fields. So we do want to have quite a large area to be able to spawn large vehicles and lots of vehicles at the same time. Now, as far as getting out of the dealer, we've got a modest area here, but you are going to want to... Uh, have your headers in transport position. So we've got a second trigger over here at the dealer as well. As far as uh, repair goes. Now I'm going to try to do my best during this drive around to hit all of these areas, but man, man, oh man, there are an absolute ton of them. So as we're driving around, I don't think we need to really run down through all of the production once again as we talk about our scoring metric, but we are going to begin the map clearly a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such because, well, in single player, We've got massive areas like this that we have available. We can either plow these up and make more fields or have a massive, massive additional production going on here because of all these areas that are in multiplayer, large industrial farms as well. And then all of these also have transfer areas already built in for taking product in and off the trains. With respect to the ability to sell all of our basic prompts, animal outputs, and productions, of course, we're going to be giving the map a full point there as well because, quite frankly, we can literally sell everything. Base game prompts, base game animal outputs, base game productions, platinum expansion productions, 
as well as the myriad of other custom crops and productions that are available here on this map. With respect to, can the farms be customizable? In single player, yes, the farm can be customizable. I did run across an interesting aspect of the farm customization in that if you go and sell the farmhouse, there are a few things that remain floating that were tied to the farmhouse. But by the time I got around to selling everything else at the main farm, those residual elements were gone. So they seem to be tied to something else that I was able to get rid of. Here we have a cell point up here on the hillside, overlooking a little bit of a camp area. Take ourselves down here to a little campground, cabins that you can rent and overlook the majestic lands that there is below. So as I said, I was able to sell everything at the main farm. I'll be honest, I did not because the multiplayer farms are just so expansive. I did not try to sell everything at every multiplayer farm. Uh, but given my experience that all the player farms are built out the same, they all have the same starting equipment, I am going to basically assume, we know it means when that happens, but anyway, I'm going to assume that all of the uh, other multiplayer farms are also built out so you can sell them as well. Another large placeable mode over here just beside field 17 and 14 we have our large fleet of greenhouses All right so these are going to take water as their input and then other inputs like pallets and such we have our configuration icon there and then we have our pallet spawn points on the side so we have four lettuce four tomato and four strawberry greenhouses do have informational signs here also letting you know which does what we have a water buy point over here so we are going to give the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell our and customize our farms Here we have our deli salad production. So we have our interactive icon, we have our dump points located right here. Then we have our pallet spawn point around the back. As I mentioned during the fly around, we then have an area over here that has been set up to help us transfer product to and from this particular train line. Right here. And then we do have a rent train option. Then we have a sell all sell point located over here. This would be the Western sell all sell point. Now, there are a few ways you can tell that a map is a 4x map one we're moving at 60 mile an hour and you can see how slow our little indicator is moving over there on the mini map on the left second i'm going to point out a little bit later you can look at the coordinates that are below the mini map and of course it's probably gonna be hard to see those with the uh with this video but you will notice that the coordinates are vastly different for a 4x map versus a standard size map and take a look at that crop that must be the red cabbage holy cow that is 
That is some that is some bright color right there. And that is basically when you get to the far eastern edge of the map, you're gonna find that coordinate is gonna be 4096 or between 4096 and 2048. If it's greater than 2048, then you know it's larger than a standard size map. Let's quickly make our way over here to the production that's beside field two. Here we have two train lines, and we have dump and fill points for both of those. And these are going to be allow you to transfer product between those lines. Here we have our flour mill, I believe. Yep, our grain mill. So our pallet spawn point. We have a bulk dump point there for our outputs. We have our grain dump point there. We have our interactive icon there as well. I'm going to run across the northern part of the map now. See if we can't meet up with this train. Multiple trains passing pretty close to each other. Here we have quite the interesting complex. We have the ability to take product off of our trailers and then, depending on the line, transfer them to various train lines that we want to then run the product around on. So we have three train lines, we have three dump, three fill points to transfer products from train to train transfer products from train to trailer or trailer to train. Let's make our way further across the northern part of the map. Again, we're going to come across that area that is set aside for one of the four multiplayer farms we've already taken a look at. It's going to be located right here. And again, in single player, well, you can pretty much do whatever you want with this once you buy the land. We have one of our many fuel points. should include an area to sell our diesel and def as well. Uh, let's we've missed the road. I've missed the road to our sawmill, so we're just going to Podoc around here until we get to it.
thought I missed it. Apparently I didn't. It's right here. So we have our sawmill. We have our wood chip fill point over here to our left. We have our wood cell point to our right, our wood cell trigger directly ahead, and then our pallet spawn point and our interactive icon for the sawmill. We then have our carpentry located over here for our pallet spawn point. We have our wood cell trigger, we have our dump point for our wood. Another dump point for our other inputs and our interactive icon right there. And then we have our pallet factory, which is located right here. We have our pallet spawn point, our interactive icon. We have our dump point for our pallet factory. Nice storage shed here as well for all of those inputs. So to the north, we talked about a couple cell points and various things. I think we'll just skip driving over to those. So I know this is going to be a massively long video, but there is just so much to cover. I mean, the production rundown alone took forever. Up on the hill, we have another universal sell all location. I believe this is going to be marked on the map as sell all northeast. Here we have our dairy and our ice cream factory. So our dairy is located right here. We have our interactive icon on the left. Our dump point on the right, our pallet spawn point also here around the back. Then we have our ice cream factory, we have our interactive icon under the awning, our pallet point, and then our dump point over here on the side. We have a train line that we can transfer products to and from. And this is going to be here only delivery for the dairy. So we've got nice signage going on here to transfer products to the dairy only. We have our cheese factory. Right there, we have the full wheel of cheese out front. So we have our dump point, our pallet point, and our interactive icon at the cheese factory. And the cheese factory has a wonderful view over the valley and the BGA. And down the hill we go. We have our biogas plant over here to our left. With a universal sell-all. Sell all BGA located right there. All our various dump points, fill points here at the biogas plant, interactive icons. Then we have three three sided silage bunkers. As I mentioned, I try to sell the BGA and the bunkers. I was not successful in doing that. So this BGA does appear to be baked into the map. Oh, coming along town, we have a whole heap load of various things going on. 
let's just pull up the map itself and just kind of do a quick run through of what they all are. So we have first we have a clothing factory, we have a fertilizer factory, as well as our train rent. We have feed production. We have a supermarket cell point, rent train again, sugar mill, special feed and fertilizing agent mill. We have our bakery, and then we have our spinnery. Here we have a lot of buy points for various farm products, restaurants, workshops, and so forth and such. Of course, this is our main starting farm. So we have our pallet point, we have our dump point, and no doubt around the front, we're gonna have our interactive point right there. It's the front door. Coming up to our next production, we do have the ability to transfer product to and from the train here. We have our dump point and fill points. Our interactive icon as well. Aha, I knew the train was coming. I was paying attention. You didn't catch me off guard there. So down below we have a fuel point, we have our Mama Joe's Diner cell point, we have that maintenance workshop trigger. And then over here we have kind of a buy all everything station. We'll hit that before we go back up to our production row. So here we're going to be able to buy a whole heap ton of stuff, All right? We have buy point for selling liquid fertilizer. We can sell herbicide. We can sell digestate. We can sell liquid manure here, slurry. Or over here we can buy lime. We can buy Fertilizer. We can buy seed. We can buy slurry or manure. And we can buy compost. It's kind of a universal sell and buy area. I had a ramp I didn't even see. How about that? And back over the bridge. We've got a grocery cell point. Dump point's gonna be on the other side of the building there. And here we have another production. 
crane transfer area. We're at dump point. We have our pallet spawn point, your interactive icon. And we have fill points for various inputs and a dump point for our liquid inputs and outputs. Looks like we might have like a speed camera here. This is gonna be our special um, special feed production. So we're at dump point, the fill pipe, we have our pallet spawn point, and our interactive icon around the front. That's where we're making our mineral feed and our um, silage additive. Here we have what I would think would be our bakery based on the wording here. Yep, we have an interactive icon. So is our pallet spawn point. Our dump point is going to be around the back of this particular building. It would take uh, quite a long time for you to really understand which train line went where, I think. So here we have our spinnery. We have our pallet spawn point. We have our dump point and our interactive point. Imagine if this map had collectibles also. Now we'll make our way down to the lower level of the map. And then over here we have where we would have another one of those multiplayer farms. Right now it's just barren, empty land. And again, each of these multiplayer farms has an area to transfer product to and from at least one train line. this road so to our left we have our animal dealer as well as some other production going on this is our refinery so we have our dump point this is our pulp plant. So we're at dump point in our interactive icon. Wood cell trigger, log, dump point, pallet, spawn point. Our animal dealer located over there. Yeah, I thought that was the refinery, but that's that's still coming up.
through our power point, we have our dump point, and then this factory. Uh, this factory is the oil mill. And here we have Myers Manufacturing. This is where we had our our popcorn and our other products. So we have our interactive icon there. We have our pallet spawn point and our dump point. We also have an area to transfer product from the train, it looks like. So that dump point back there was for pallets, specifically. And here we have our other inputs being dumped into. Now we have another kind of large area here for our just placing of products. Kind of interesting to see those scattered around like we don't have enough production already, right? This map is is going to be ideal for the player that wants to play on big fields and possibly get into big and complex productions. Now, welcome to our refinery. Diesel and death production. Through interactive icon, we have our dump point. And we have our output or fill point for those liquid products. And we should have, yep, a way to get those onto the train cars. Anyway, further down south, we've got our main starting farm off in the distance over there. We have another one of our grocery style cell points located right here. And there are a whole lot of dots here in town. We've got a cell point here as well on this street. And if we turn around, we're going to have another one, I think, around the corner here. Or I was uh, turned around, I think there's one on the corner on the other side of town. We have our tailor, dump point, interactive icon, and pallet spawn point. We have a fuel point. Here as well. Let's just get off here to the side and once again take a look at where we are. So we have our dealer here. We have our supermarket. We have the left. Delicatessens, delica, delicacies, men's fashions, as far as a cell point. We have our confectionery. We have a gas station, buy point, and a cell point for diesel and def. We have an all sale center. We have biomass heating plant. We have our rent trains. And we have then the kind of the train silo, compost factory, pizza processing, cereal factory, fizzy spriz, fish farming. Then we have a bunch of buy and buy points here as well. So let's go ahead and make our way over here to these production items. Oh, 
I like how we've incorporated a uh, a game fictional. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, we just sped through town. That was indeed a speeding camera. We have a bakery. All right, so we're dump point there. Can't believe I got caught speeding. I never speed. I'm I I always obey the laws. Oh, I like the uh, I like the passenger train. That's cool. Hey, that is complex rail network going on here. Just past your train. Kind of neat. Busy Spriz on our left. Where our drink factory is. So we have our power point, interactive point, and dump point there. Coming up to our next production. Pretty much easy to figure out where everything is there. Another production going on. Pizzeria. So we have our dump point, interactive, and pallet spawn. Compost production located right there. It's all fenced in, so we're not going to double back. But we have all of our inputs and outputs there. I think this is going to then take us back around to our town. Yep, we're just on the other side of the tracks. Hopefully the good side of the tracks. We don't want to be on the wrong side of the tracks. Here we have a grocery area. This is set up as a wood dump point. Then we have a cell point for our general products. And then around the back, this is like the, uh, this is like the bulk warehouse cell point. Because then we can buy our lime, our fertilizer, our seed, liquid fertilizer, herbicide, digestate, compost, manure, just a bulk warehouse that sells it all, sells it and buys it. Our fish farm is up here, let's double back for our fish farm. There we have Mr. Fish Farm. So we have our pallet spawn point. We're at dump point for our fish 
inputs and then we have our interactive icon right there No, we can't see down in there. I like how everything is labeled. Now, of course, if you don't understand German, then you're, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage with a lot of this signage, but overall, you can always click on the hotspot. And I've said before, and I thought it would be really cool, is if the game would have the ability to, to kind of have dynamic signage right like if you've got signage that you can put in alternate languages and then they would show up on the sign itself we have our chocolate here from Erlengrot so we have our interactive icon our pallet spawn point and dump points Oh, we're stuck in the employee parking lot. Now, with respect to buildings where appropriate are using the new texturing technique, we're going to give the map a full point there. Yes. Uh, we are seeing buildings from Elm Creek, Hope of the Rune, and Erlingrot. All of those buildings are using the new newest techniques. Here we have another sell all sell point. It's probably south center we have a farmer's market another grocery cell point located here as well just a few more areas I want to hit and I know I probably missed a couple but given the current length of this video and well the amount of things that we have 100% indeed covered I think overall we have it covered as best as any one person is going to be able to double back here to our chocolatier and hang a left I'd love to know your all's thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map I thought Frontier was uh, was complicated but nope 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 we have taken that up a notch R3 So we have another fuel point to buy fuel and sell our diesel in def. Uh, here we have that hotel that's overlooking the western part of the map. That is a sell point. there Just wonderful views then down here we have another train transfer point and then we have that diesel point so with respect to player and interactive areas being clearly marked, we have not had any issues whatsoever in really figuring out what goes where. We've seen things that are marked fairly well as well. I think it wouldn't take too terrible long at all for a player to really figure out exactly what is going on here. So this is a pretty big accomplishment because this map with everything that's going on, all of its custom production, all of these triggers all over the place. We're giving this map a five out of five. I'd love to hear again what your all's thoughts are down below with respect to this map. Or are you going to give it a go? 
and a word of warning if you do feel that you want to give this a go. As I said, production revamp has been known in the past to cause some conflicts with, with mods. So if you do have a large mod folder that you typically play with, I would highly suggest that you pull a lot of those mods out and start small with respect to your mod folder and then add them in slowly until you get to a point where you are fairly stable and you have added in what you want to have added in for this playthrough. Because if you just toss the map in, toss production revamp in with your thousand other mods, you may become frustrated because you may find that it's not going to load up right away. And until next time, happy farming.